Welcome to another testing video in the Building Performance Workshop with my friend Scott Marner. Hello. Hello, Corbett. <laughs> Scott is the first one to come and visit and stay in our tiny lab. And I'm very excited because he does what I do. So he has done a lot of testing. Right now, you're in more of a quality control yeah, role, right? Quality assurance, yeah. Um, and so we're going to get him back into the testing right now because he misses it terribly, and so do you. So get your tools out, let's practice some stuff. We're gonna do something weird right now. What is set up right now? Oh, we got a, a duck blaster set up in front of us. Duck tester. Duck tester, you're duck right. Blaster duck blaster is the blaster. Minneapolis version. Duck tester is the uh, Retrotech version. Normally we use this to... See how tight duct work is. Right, today we are not doing that. What are we doing instead? See how tight this box is? Oh no, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> test some, uh, the flow on some grills. So. We are gonna test the flow on some grills, but Scott makes a good point. The first thing you wanna do when you're about to think outside of the box, we want to test our rig to make sure that our rig isn't leaking. So let's go ahead and run a um, duct tight test. What we have here is box that used to hold paper. What we're gonna do with it eventually is test these HVAC grills, but to make sure that this is gonna make sense, I wanna go ahead and, and run a flow test on this. So if you would please monitor what is going on here. I'm using the manual speed control on this. And by the way, we're using this size hole. That's a number seven hole. It's the smallest one. So we're gonna run this up to 25 pascals, just like we always do in ductwork land. You wanna call it? Yeah, about one and three quarter CFM. Okay, great. 25 pascals. 25 pascals, 1.7 CFM of leakage out of this box. Is it worth chasing 1.7 CFM? Probably not for these purposes. That, that is an incredibly tight duct system. This is a very small duct system. Um, we could go ahead and tape all these joints and for the real test that I'm gonna do later when I get super anal off camera, I'm gonna tape that up and see what difference it makes. We're gonna run three different tests on the, each grill. We're gonna do airflow. We're also gonna test velocity. And then we're gonna do the last one, which is pressure drop. Now, the interesting thing about doing any test at all is that you have to have an anchor. When we do a blower door test, which you've seen a lot on this channel, what is the anchor that we're using, Scott? Uh, the pressure difference between the home. Right, so the pressure difference between the home and outside, which one of those is the anchor between the- Oh, uh, the outside. Right, so Sorry, the outside, yeah. and, but Illinois is where Scott is from, and we've gone to Iowa plenty of times. So it's very flat. When the wind gets going there, I have had baseline measurements of 37 pascals. That is not a good anchor. You wanna make sure that your anchor stays put. The whole point of an anchor is something that does not move so that you can do things out here and you know that it's solid. Now in this test, we're gonna to have to anchor one of these three measurements because we only have three things that we're, we can pivot off of. Um, and we are going to be pivoting off of the anchor of airflow. So we're gonna be doing airflow tests on all five of these grills. I'm only gonna show you one in this video because it's not, we don't wanna, again, make this overly long. Um, but if we do an airflow test at 50, 100, and 150, does that sound like a reasonable range of flows for a, for a grill. supply? Yeah. Cool. Um, so we'll do it both again in supply and return mode. If it was a return, this would be a room return, which would only run about that same amount. Before we start testing the grills on this box, we wanna find out what the pressure drop between this box and out here is to start with. So we're gonna reach our target airflow at the three different stations that we're shooting for, 50 CFM, 100 CFM, 150 CFM, and test what the pressure inside this box with reference to outside with our static pressure probe, which you can see right here. And it looks like at the middle station at 100 CFM, we're at 0 0.0075 inches of water column. We'll go ahead and record that and we'll deduct that so we don't punish the grill for what the box is doing. Okay, so we have now converted this box to a, just basically a duck boot. And so we're gonna be sending the air into this box. It's gonna be coming out of the face of this. These are from a company that I've worked with for a while called Stellar Air Vents. We have them installed here in our house. Please don't let your friends and your family buy decorative floor vent covers or any kind of decorative covers that don't have some kind of a test data on them. So I test their grills and these are the first supply grills that we're testing. So we've got our imaginary boot here and our grill cover. We are going to be running the 74 ring on our duct tester. 
and we're monitoring an inches of water column here. So we are at 150 CFM and we've got a pressure drop of 0 0.01. Hang on a second. I'm gonna make the time average longer. Anything you can do to try and even out to make that anchor better to settle things down is, is good. 0 0.0112 is what we're gonna call it. And now uh, we are also going to verify the CFM with a large van anemometer and we're gonna get the velocity while we're at it. So Scott's taking a timed average. You wanna let the anemometer ramp up to full speed before you hit start on your timed average and then he's using a nice technique. He presses pause and now we get the, uh, so what was our feet per minute? We're looking at 560 feet per minute, which is actually great. If you're talking about this being a supply, 500 feet per minute to 700 feet per minute is the kind of ideal uh, range of this. So if it was higher than that because it was more restricted, that might be bad. So now we have our three measurements. We used the 150 as an anchor. That's what we targeted. And then we found the other two measurements. We can go ahead and do this again at 100 CFM and at 50 CFM, get those values as well, and then build a table. Now here is where the math comes in. And this is where we can find out what this grill is actually doing on this test rig as far as the correction factor goes. An anemometer just measures the amount of air coming through. That's velocity. Um, and what we need to do in order to figure out what the CFM is, is to give this the actual area of hole that is coming through here. It's impossible to tell what this is. I could ask the engineer who designed this thing, but what I could do instead is I know I'm blowing 50.2 CFM. I am measuring a velocity that's consistent, but my CFM here is 70 and here it's 50. This one is real. This one is not real. And it's because we haven't added the correction factor in here. So all we have to do is divide our CFM, which is 50, by our velocity, which is an average over the time, but let's just say that it's 213 feet per minute. And that gives us the actual square feet. So 0 0.23474, blah, blah, blah square feet. I'm going to save this number. I'm actually going to multiply this by 144 to convert it into square inches. And I can see that it's 33.8 square inches of what we call net free area on this grill, the amount of actual holes. Now this grill is a 10 by six. That's 60 square inches supposedly. So all we have to do is divide 60 into this number and it gives us our correction factor. So now if I put in 0.56 as my correction factor here, now these two should line up. So you can see I'm getting back up to my velocity. And when I hit 200 and in the range of 210, where we were before, now I've got 50.2, 50.2 when I pointed to it. These are very, very close to each other. And that is what you want. That's why you figure out this K factor or correction factor. And now we can measure this in the field and know that we have the correct net free area for these grills if we're going through an actual house and measuring this. What's to say that that's wrong? Yeah, basically as long as you know the parameters and set everything around, you set the conditions for the test and that's as long as you let people know what you're testing to, that's, that's the standard you're setting. The manufacturers of grill vents that are huge corporations have their own test labs and how do they build their test criteria, do you think? Experimentation. It just, what seems they to make just sense. made it up. And then they publish their table and it looks very intimidating um, to somebody who's not an engineer like me. Are you an engineer? No, I'm not an engineer. Okay, yeah, right. But as long as you're thinking about using things precisely and you have accurate tools, you can build stuff out of cardboard boxes and tools that you already have and be creatively thinking about diagnostics. So thank you very much for coming to visit me. I appreciate, appreciate you having it. me. Absolutely. Uh, I hope that you guys stay tuned to this channel. Make sure you're subscribed. Also, come out to the training center. If you want to come down here and we're five minutes from the airport, Scott drove. Please do make sure that you comment if you have other things to add about tests like this or things that you want to see from this channel. 
Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.